Welcome back. I'm now delighted to introduce our next topic for the session today, Generation Z. We have heard a lot about this Gen Z group, but who are they really? According to a 2020 report from McKinsey, Gen Z are born between 1996 and 2012, making them an upcoming generation of consumers and talents at work. According to the report, by 2025, this group will make up a quarter of the Asia-Pacific region's population. And as Gen Zers mature, they will have higher earning power, leading them to spend more. It is clear that Gen Z has their own unique characteristics, this I should know since I am one. And to unpack this further, we have a distinctive roundtable to kickstart this conversation. We bring together trend forecasters WGSN and LVMH Gen Zers to discuss what we can anticipate in terms of expectations and behaviours for this generation, and how these can translate to opportunities for luxury. WGSN is the leading trend authority, weaving qualitative research and quantitative analysis, and with a team of editors, experts, and strategic consultants in all regions, they connect the dots to predict the products, experiences, and services which affluent consumers will need in years to come, helping luxury brands stay relevant and secure their place in the future. We have Adrian Mole, Lee Consultants Luxury, who is based in Hong Kong, Athena Chen, Senior Strategic Editor based in China, and Jian Go, Strategic Consultant based in Singapore from WGSN with us today. This team collectively brings their experience in strategic advisory and cultural foresight. From LVMH, we have Joanne Lam, Product Sales Manager Beauty from DFS Group, who is based in Hong Kong, and Laurel Wang, Management Trainee from Louis Vuitton, China, both who started their careers with LVMH on rotational management trainee programs. On this note, Allow me to hand over to Adrian, who will introduce the session today. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our presentation on Asia, Gen Z, and luxury, creative rebelliousness. Thanks for LVMH for having us today. Today will be a bit of a different format, where usually we would present a report. Today we will focus on a roundtable made of WGSN experts and uh, LVMH amazing young uh, and talented employees. Now moving on to our interactive discussions. We will cover four topics. Uh, progressive digital economy, where we'll see how gamification, NFT, or metaverse will help you achieve tomorrow's communication and consumer engagement. Independent futures and collective decisions with a specific interview of uh, both Joanne and Loria from LVMH on their understanding of collectiveness and singularity. Gen Z New Visions, where we will highlight emerging behaviors in the region from Southeast Asia to Japan, and Management New Vision of Works, looking at how this new vision translates onto your future hires and retention. Um, just a note as well, uh, the full report we will present today will be available on the learning library after our presentation. Now moving on the digital economy. So uh, virtual world is evolving uh, at quite a fast pace and moving into what we call enabling new modes of expressions and experiences where consumers will now see technology as an extension of themselves and they will choose to spend more time in deeply immersive, immersive environment. Next, in that space, we highlighted three trends uh, that will be uh, extremely relevant and impact your future luxury strategies. The first one is fintech, where we're seeing new apps and new services enabling new type of financial services and allowing younger generation to have access to more credits and more investment capabilities creating also new opportunities for brands to action new loyalty programs or new incentives. With the gamification effect, we focus on the cryptocurrencies and NFTs, or non-fungible token, which gamify the formerly exclusive world of uh, stocks and art, making it quite approachable to high-earning Gen Zers. 
And finally, the metaverse novelty, where we see digital and metaversal open worlds rapidly being utilized in APAC to secure the attention of digital savvy Gen Zers, creating new experiences and new customer touch point. Now let's look at this uh, data point. This one is quite interesting. In the region, one third of Gen Zers spent at least six hours a day on their phones. That's a massive opportunity for brands to fast track digital opportunities, but also to create cross reality touch points. Next. Sorry, we are going to move with Athena. Athena, thank you for joining the conversation. Um, you are Senior Strategist Editor at WGSN and based in Shanghai. Tell us more on how this new digital economy is impacting consumers in the region. Thank you, Adrian. So definitely, Asia Gen Zers are a super hyper-connected bunch of consumers that have never known a world without the internet or their mobile phones. So it definitely makes sense that um, their top sources of information for luxury goods are entirely digital. So to capture the attention of these young luxury consumers, we're seeing luxury brands now quickly embracing emerging social media platforms and looking for new ways to evolve digital storytelling and create really interactive experiences for them. Can you tell us more uh, or give us a few examples of this digital storytelling? Yes. So definitely we're seeing um, Louis Vuitton from the LBMH group. They have really prioritized um, the fast growing social digital app, Douyin, which is the Chinese version of TikTok. And it is very popular among Gen Z in China. And they use that platform to live stream their Shanghai Spring Summer 21 menswear show. And the brand also launched a comprehensive video driven social campaign on the day of their fashion show. So um, they uh, featured fun and spontaneous short videos of behind-the-scenes shoots with celebrities and you know um, that's this was widely shared across both brand and celebrity social media accounts and really created huge online buzz for the brand so the fashion shows doing hashtag received more than 91 million views and this is a really successful example of how you know social media channels can really serve as a great channel to connect with the younger gen z consumers yeah, definitely. And um, in the report, we also address gamification. Uh, could you give us a few examples on how that translates in your region? Yes. So definitely um, Gen Z consumers are now really multifaceted. So they're growing into, you know, these emerging luxury shoppers, but they're also, you know, gamers and, you know, uh, fans of different subcultures at the same time. So uh, gaming and esports are definitely, you know, this fantasy world which designers and brands can push creative boundaries. And we're seeing luxury leaders now creating game-minded runway shows and also interesting digital capsule collections for well-known uh, video games. So in China, we have Tencent's hugely popular mobile game called Honor of Kings, and they launched a limited in-game skin collaboration with luxury auto brand BMW. And we're also seeing other uh, luxury auto brands such as Rolls-Royce uh, also producing in-game skins for a racing game called QQ Speed, also produced by Tencent. And um, electric car brand Tesla and Italian sports car Maserati have both put out virtual versions of their cars into the Chinese version of popular mobile game PUBG, which is called Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. So really going further, we can imagine how you know brands will really sell ownership of such digital experiences, digital spaces, and even create virtual fashion as an extension of their existing collections. Yeah, that's really true. An another area of interest, I think, is around um, the, the NFT we mentioned earlier. So NFT are non-fungible token. It's a technology of uh, selling and buying, a bit like an auction that relies on the blockchain. And this appeared in 2020 or 2021 as one of the top luxury investment disruptors. And now, as we move forward here in the region, we're seeing more and more artists, brands, icons as well flocking to the space to create their own distinctive tokens and we can quite easily imagine how that will translate and impact luxury goods and retail uh, in the futures uh, they will now be able to sell to young um, investors this gamified experience uh, you talked about Athena or digital space or digital assets through this NFT or non-fungible token. 
And next, um, we have uh, GN. So GN is our consultant based in Singapore. Um, how this progressive digital economy translates with your clients? Um, I mean, first of all, listening to you and Athena, I'm actually reminded of an article which predicts that the next market for luxury is actually the virtual world and virtual commerce. So I have to say that remarkably, the fashion and beauty clients that we work with at WGSN have all been pretty courageous and agile in adopting a digital first approach to product launch and development. So as, as Athena mentioned, they're all realizing that the digital economy is where they will reach these Gen Z consumers, especially the luxury consumers, because digital luxury or fashion is accessible from anywhere and everywhere. So from a product development perspective, particularly, the advantages of a digital first approach are in fact twofold. Um, firstly, it serves as great testing ground for product development. If these brands launch their goods digitally first, they have an opportunity to gather and analyze user data to understand market and consumer motivations as well. So for instance, what people want by age group, by gender, by geographies, and so on, and then manufacture or distribute these goods based on that. And of course, the second ties to sustainability and doing a part to tackle luxury fashion's waste problem. So hypothetically, the useful data that comes from a digital first approach will allow these brands to balance supply and demand and make more accurate inventory planning decisions, all of which will then in turn minimize waste for the luxury sector. So in a perfect world, if luxury brands tested their goods virtually, it would have an, a tremendous impact collectively. Yeah. Are uh, luxury brands quite uh, scared about using or translating these values onto, onto the, the digital world, like scarcity or time, like this, what, the value that made the luxury world uh, um, more traditionally? Yeah. Um, I think our clients, yeah, they do worry about how they are presented in the virtual world, um, but they're also equally excited to embrace this digital economy and a different way of doing things while upholding the same luxury values such as scarcity, uh, rarity or exclusivity. So for instance, a lot of virtual com commerce means democratizing luxury. So you don't have to be the wealthiest or the most privileged to gain access to ownership. But that actually doesn't mean that there is no exclusivity or scarcity. So in the virtual world, for example, um, the volume of goods determines the rarity or scarcity and vice versa. So while you don't need to be the wealthiest to have it, you do have to be the first in line to get it. And that is a business model that really resonates strongly with Gen Z and the luxury consumers of tomorrow. Thank you, Jen. So next we will have a look at uh, our... Uh, sorry, the following section of the report, independent futures and collective decisions. So here, of course, uh, we cover the group-based mentality that kind of unified the, the region and is evolving. We have new fan cultures emerging in Southeast Asia, for example, but through uh, this conversation today, we will focus on how micro-influencers and curated content are rapidly catching up as a new way to address luxury and singularity for a cohort eager to stand out. We have three evolving uh, trends in that space. The main one is the With Me phenomenon. I think that was born in uh, Seoul first or in, in Korea first, and now it's moving on to uh, the APAC region as a whole. We are witnessing an interesting With Me phenomenon in which Gen Z youth choose to watch point of view content revolving around everyday life activities, can be around cleaning, eating, grocery shopping, and that's a massive opportunity for brands to do content placement, product placement, or to partner with these micro-influencers. Idol fan economy, of course, is evolving. The, the idea behind Idol fan is also evolving, and we're seeing more and more collaboration happening between the luxury space and these macro-influencers. Uh, and finally, redefining ownership. So while that wasn't necessarily new, or that isn't necessarily new in East Asia, and I'm thinking uh, about Japan, uh, more prominently, second-hand vintage and re rental goods are seen as a more viable, financially sensible ways for Gen Z consumers to partake in a trend. 
uh, but also to participate uh, into the circular luxury economy. So to discuss uh, this uh, element, we have uh, Joanne and Loria. So first, let's, uh, let's talk with Loria. Loria, thank you for joining us today. You're management trainee at Louis Vuitton. How does the With Me uh, trend, With Me phenomenon, translate with your generation, but also with your experience of retail? Thanks, Adrian. Uh, thank you for having me here. So as Adrian mentioned before, I think Gen Z is all about an influencing culture. We like to find someone who we can resonate with and follow them not only on social media, but also with their lifestyle in person. Uh, the specific characteristic of Gen Z has resulted into a phenomenon, or rather a term called KOL, Key Opinion Leaders. But recently, the term in Asia has gradually transformed into another term, KOS, Key Opinion Sales. So normally, uh, traditional retail is about our salesperson giving service to our clients. It is a one-way model. Our salespersons are basically in a position of passiveness and to be frank, I would say somewhat inferior. Uh, however, the idea of KOS could reverse this hierarchy. We can take more initiatives and become more uh, proactive. We can take more, uh, we can present ourselves in a way to influence our clients. When our salesperson become KOS, they can actively send messages to our clients and influence their pattern of consumption. This will be totally different from celebrities presenting our brands and our products because uh, our clients will feel more closer and more familiar with KOS because celebrities are usually a little bit surreal and uh, KOS could be felt as like normal people who we can even meet daily. So to put it in a very simplified way, we can tell our clients what to buy and they will be happy about it. Also in this way, the relationship between our salesperson and our clients are stronger and more personalized. Our salespersons are not only someone who gives services, but also a unique figure that has personalities and features that can attract our clients. In this way, I think the relationship is more equal, spiritual, and tends to last longer. So the mindset of retail needs to adapt to a younger generation of targeted customers, fast digitalization, and big data. Uh, Gen Z is no question uh, the next strong purchasing power of Asia. And I think Vuitton, uh, my brand, is already adapting to this new idea. We are on the way and slowly probing a new module. Uh, so for example, we have held a few live streamings to launch our new collections. We chose our regional styling managers to be the host of these live streamings. They were chosen because first of all, they have styles. Gen Z is in no way would resist someone who have styles and they could wear Vuitton clothing and still have their own personalities. Also, they're the ones who have the most knowledge about our products. So the results came out to be very assuring. Uh, although we did not really sell our products through the live streaming, the collection was very popular and the season uh, in the in that season and it made really big sales. Customers would come to the store holding the picture of a of the live streaming and asking for that specific jacket that was worn by the styling manager. And our next step would be cultivating more KOS in Vuitton China, not only styling managers, but also our sales assistants. We have already been recruiting CAs to become the host of live streamings and daily postings on social medias are also encouraged. Stores and uh, store managers will encourage our CAs to try on our own products, take pictures and share them on different platforms of social media. And these are all very little steps, but I believe that by these really small steps, we are walking towards a new retail and a new, re uh, new luxury business module. Thank you and back to Adrian. Yeah, thank you. That is uh, extremely insightful. Now we are moving uh, to Joanne. She's product sales manager at uh, DFS. And uh, Joanne, if I remember correctly, in our previous conversation, uh, the curated content, but also the With Me phenomenon quite resonated with you. How does that translate with your generation? 
Yeah, thanks, Adrian. And good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be in this panel. So in terms of the with me phenomena we're witnessing, I believe the rising trend is because of the companionship that people desire, especially now during the pandemic when many people have been in lockdown. And in my case, when I'm on my day off, I open YouTube videos all day to watch this kind of content. And this makes me feel a strong connection to others, almost like I'm hanging out with my friend at home. And hence why, I think it is an opportunity for brand to consider tapping more into this with me contents as a soft selling way to target the target customers. So what they can consider doing is to partner with those influencers of with me videos whose audience resonates with them and to have the influencers to feature the products in their video so as to increase the brand and product awareness. And I believe Gen Z, my generation, are utilizing social media and linking it with our own values. I consider myself a very typical Gen Z and I value self-differentiation and self-expression. Most of us like uh, always showing a very unique side of ourselves to differentiate us with others, just like we want to build our own personal branding. And for me personally, it is the same. And I do always like telling people my hashtag philosophy. This is one hashtag represent us or are an extension of our own personality. So when people think of me, they immediately recall a hashtag that re uh, relates to me uniquely. For example, my hashtag would be beauty enthusiast and beauty addict, meaning I like all things beauty. And when my friends want beauty advices, they di directly come to me. And I per perceive social media to be powerful in this area as it is a go-to platform for me to seek inspiration from people that have similar interests or style as me. For instance, like those beauty bloggers and beauty micro-influencers. For example, let's say when there is a Christian Dior Christian Foundation is launched and my favorite beauty blogger, let's say Kathleen Lights on YouTube, post or recommend it, I would instantly get inspired by her and become interested to try the product and ultimately get persuaded to purchase it. So what does it mean for luxury? For Gen Z, we gravitate towards people who we have the same style, same hashtag, resonate with their content and get inspired by those content. And for me, it matters less about what the celebrity status of the influencers or even the brand itself. What is important to me is if a product connect well with my personal style, personal hashtag, then I'm more willing to give it a try. So in summary, how is this relevant to luxury brands? Well, I believe Gen Z like me, who love being unique and passionate about self-expression, uh, we invest all of our time on social media and get influenced by influencers that we find relevant to ourselves and ultimately lead to us wanting to become part of their hashtag that they represent. So when luxury brands have celebrities, influencers, or even micro-influencers to represent their brand, I think it's very important to find the group of audience you want to speak to first, then think clearly about what the message or hashtag that you want your brand a collection to represent, then have the relevant influencers to promote. So this is how you can target Gen Z like myself and convert us as your customer. So this is it. Pass it back to you, Adrian. Thank you, Joanne. That was very insightful and it's a perfect uh, transition as well with our next topic, new, vis new visions of Gen Z and new behaviors. So this idea of self-expression, this is highly important for communication purposes, but it is also uh, shaping social progression, breaking down traditional gender, culture, or belief stereotypes we are seeing in the region. And that can't be ignored by luxury brands if they want to stay relevant. So in that space, there are three zones to watch, three trends. The first one, of course, is modern patriotism. Uh, that is a growing topic recently. So we're seeing Gen Z in APAC uh, kind of foregoing uh, immediate patronage of all things foreign in favor of culturally relevant uh, consumerism. There is quite of a contrast as well, um, or two directions between China and Southeast Asia, China with the national pride growing and the made in China. China uh, meaning kind of evolving as well. And Southeast Asia, highly multifaceted, where we're seeing different um, type of uh, religious expressions as well. And at WGSN, we um, study a lot the Gen M or young Muslim tech savvy uh, luxury consumers of tomorrow. We will have a massive interest as long as brands are um, aligned with their faith and uh, 
lifestyle. Advocacy attitudes look at how young Gen Zers are spearheading a movement of visibility using social media, but also the social place to raise issues of concerns into the public. And finally, with the subculture shifts, we have an entire generation uh, somehow unified. Athena will talk a bit more about that. But uh, looking back at a past trend, they have not lived through, but re-engaging with this trend and adding on top of them a message of feminism, sex positivity, cool creativity and localism, leading to a more hopeful celebration of the youth of today. Athena, do you want to add something on that? Yes, thank you, Adrian. So definitely, when we're looking at Asia Gen Zers, they're searching for ways to contribute to building, you know, their cultural identity, and they're definitely buying into brands that can represent, uh, you know, their creativity and, you know, represent their interests. So this is a group that's very diverse. They enjoy different music genres, video games, and they love anime, comics. So we're seeing a lot of luxury brands now also tapping into the esports communities. And uh, we've even seen luxury brands such as Fendi and Dior dressing uh, pro gamers as, you know, they would dress uh, luxury influencers. So that's definitely, you know, a step forward for brands looking to connect with these subcultural interests. So now back to you, Adrian, to explore how these shifts are impacting on Gen Z hires and retention. Yeah, so that's our next topic, uh, and that is specific to this conversation. These new visions will have a massive impact on your recruitment strategies, on uh, careers, on hires as well, and on retentions of these uh, Gen Zs. So now moving on to our next topic, new visions are set to impact uh, the workplace and your management strategies will have to be somehow redefined to match these new behaviors. So we've conducted recent data, recent surveys, sorry, in the region, and it turns, that, um, turns out that Gen Z youth are highly goal-oriented and they focused on carving out the right path and finding within companies, within mentors, within their structure, they want to find resource and entrepreneurial ways to support themselves. To discuss it further, uh, let's go back to Joanne and Loria. How these new visions of work uh, translate for you for your career or on the workplace? Okay, thank you, Adrian. Um, so I would say that Gen Z is a group of people who are uh, very ambitious. With the Gen Z we are talking about usually have good background and good education. Uh, because of our parents' hard working, we wouldn't worry too much about money. So we're ambitious. We have experienced what people normally would call a good life. And of course, we want more, uh, whether it's more wealth, fame, or success. However, we can be really lost sometimes uh, because we have seen so many. We have so many resources. We get lost in all these opportunities and options. We want success, but don't know among so many ways which path is going to take us to the ultimate success. We don't know what we want sometimes because we want so much. <laughs> so this ambition with uncertainty follows us definitely to our workspace. Uh, we often feel uncertain about our career. So for me, I did not I did not know what to do or what I am good at before joining Vuitton. However, Vuitton's retail management trainee program has given me some answers to my uncertainty. So I'll briefly talk about my own experience as an MT in Vuitton China, and hopefully this will give you some ideas about how to recruit Gen Z and how, uh, how to keep them as your talent. So I think the first key is to diversify the experience. Uh, for my short time of one year and a half in Vuitton, my first stage was in the store. I learned how to be a salesperson. Uh, with no exception of my title, I stood eight hours a day, greeted customers and uh, sold products. I even memorized all the SKUs of handbags. That was hard. And uh, my second stage, which is now, uh, is in the office of Shanghai headquarters. So my MT program in Louis Vuitton has enabled me to both be in the front line, getting to know the very fundamental of retail business, but also after I came to the office, I gradually pictured a holistic view of retail and luxury. So uh, about cross-functioning between departments, communications, business strategy, plannings, and et cetera. 
And I think the second key is to give Gen Z challenges, but meanwhile also give them trust and empower them. Uh, normally, a company wouldn't give too much freedom to some new joiners, especially for some big events. However, I would say that Gen Z needs to be allowed to have a space or a chance to prove and present themselves. So many innovations and ideas may just burst from these occasions. So during my time in the office, uh, there were a few events and programs that were led mainly by Gen Z. Like uh, the recent event we, ha we have held is a 2021 store management meeting, which is a three-day meeting for all the store managers across China to come to Shanghai and have a chance to share, to learn. Uh, Vitong China is already uh, also promoting a program called China Ambition. It is to promote the idea of Extraordinary Innovation Excellence EIE through the whole company to inspire and encourage our staff for a great future of Vitong China. And believe it or not, we Gen Z are leading these programs. We were actually given powers to do things and to execute our ideas. And the results did not come out to be disappointing. The store management meeting was highly praised. Uh, the store manager said it was the best store management meeting they have ever attended. I was so pleased to hear that. And because of the success, we are already organizing a team management uh, team management meeting for all the store middle management teams across China. And this may even become a legacy of China Vitong. And these are events and programs that led purely by Gen Z. Before joining Vuitton, I wouldn't believe that a big corporate like Vuitton would give uh, give its freshest staff to organize uh, to give chance to us to organize such important events. But it actually happened. So by organizing these events, I feel I really feel empowered. Uh, I feel more confident, and also I become more loyal to Vuitton China. So these are my humble opinions and my ideas about Gen Z. And pass it to uh, Joanne. What What do you think? So um, Laurie's experience with LVMH is actually very similar to my experience with DFS as a management trainee as well. And I'm really grateful for the opportunities given to me to experience different tasks and projects, which has helped me to explore and discover what I truly am passionate about at work. So for me, as a store management trainee with the company, other than the store experience, I've also rotated with the merchandising department and digital department. I remember when I was graduating from my MT program, I got asked if I'm sure that I want to stay at the store and I didn't think for more than a second and I said yes. Uh, it is because of how I can utilize my creativity to launch different initiatives at the store. It also gave me a platform to take ownership and to express myself. So recently, one of the examples I want to share with you is that an initiative launched with my team during the Easter holiday called the Unforgettable Easter. Uh, it incorporated retail team at the store for our customers to do an Easter account, hunting different promotion rewards on our shop floor when they were shopping with us. So the objective of this initiative was to bring a bit of fun to our customers during the Easter, particularly now when everyone could not travel around uh, during the holiday. It was very rewarding for me to bring what I really want to do in my mind to real life and seeing those creative ideas actually work out successfully in practice. But I do understand that in the luxury world, sometimes it might not perceive to be that flexible or incorporating those playfulness elements for the need of retaining the luxury image of the brand. But for many Gen Z like me, being able to express our creativity and do what we truly value to express ourselves and have the ownership of something to be led by ourselves are very important and rewarding for us. And this is what I believe keep us going and engage us as a Gen Z to be inspired and motivated at work. That's amazing and quite eye-opening. Thank you very much to uh, both of you. Uh, next, we have a few key takeaways. Uh, also a reminder that you will be able to find the full report on the online learning library after the, uh, of course, after the presentation. Athena, in the end, the floor is yours for the key takeaway. Thank you, Adrian. So, um, so first up, we'll definitely, you know, be seeing the digitally native Asia Gen Z leading the way in driving digitally born currencies and, you know, embracing a renewed sense of ownership through uh, NFTs, which is non-fungible tokens. And this is presenting a key opportunity for luxury brands looking to address emerging experiential needs and differentiating customer touch points. 
From a collective ownership point of view, um, from macro to micro, curation will lead with the with me phenomenon in APEC, in which parasocial relationships are driving these younger consumers' connection to one another. Vast efforts will also be devoted to staying in vogue, be it through curated goods of their favorite micro influencers or celebrities, or peer to peer rental of luxury goods. So within Asia, we're also seeing this growing call to buy local, to support economies post-COVID, and this is driving the rise of modern nationalism. So Asia's Gen Z are now looking to make their mark by championing their own cultural identity and connecting to the global stage digitally as well. So brands need to be highly aware that they understand each country's cultural sensitivities or they risk being called out by uh, the vocal Gen Z. And finally, we have creative workplace supercharged futures. So as the most educated generation in the region, Gen Z will expect from their employers to create an adequate framework for their growth and lifelong learning from the very beginning of their careers. Transversal learning and opportunities will also be praised as a way to creatively evolve in companies offering the adequate, flexible environment. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, uh, Athena and uh, GN as well. And thanks to LVMH and the participants today for uh, having us. So uh, I hope the presentation was quite informative. Uh, now we have a few questions uh, we will finish on uh, before uh, we close this session. So uh, let's go back to the five of us and uh, I will have so I have a few questions popping in the box. So the first one will be for WGSN. The question is, do you agree that uh, Gen Z value experience over products? And how should luxury respond to that? Athena or GN, do you want to go for it? Um, yeah, I can go for that. So um, I, I do agree that, that Gen Z consumers value experience over products because I think product itself is only the tip of the iceberg um, and that the biggest driver of any luxury purchase decision now amongst the Gen Z consumers is going to be um, the desire to live the full lifestyle of a brand from the start to finish. So in that sense, when we talk about brands, they are no longer just a company or a product, but more a universe. Um, I hope that answers your question. If I could also... Yes, thank you. If I could also add to that a bit, I think um, when we're talking about experiences, it's not just offline experiences, but brands really need to think in a more holistic way now as Gen Z is very digitally connected. And um, this experience has to be a unified experience across offline and offline. And brands really need to think about investing in omni-channel storytelling capabilities. Yeah, thank you, Athena. And as we mentioned earlier, I think there is an opportunity for um, to to kind of develop purchase and customer touch point around all these new uh, dimensions and we talked about the multiverse and how that opened a brand new world and the fastest growing world for luxury as well the next question will be for uh, lvmh uh, uh, joanne and loria there has been a challenge to attract Gen Z to work in retail and on the retail floor. In your experience, what can we do to attract Gen Z to work in retail? Mm, I think I can go first. So I always think there is a misunderstanding of working the front line or the retail among young generations, which is working front line is tiring and we only execute what uh, the corporate like merchants or marketing team told, told us to do. So there's not much flexibility and creativity being able to be showcased. But instead, that's not true. Um, being able to interact with our customers directly, having the first-hand information of knowing what they really want is, is exactly what enables us to work with the corporate, like the merchants, to initiate relative um, relevant uh, strategies. So there's a huge room of creativity and I think a more transparent communication showing what exactly works at the store or the front line is a good way um, to correct the misunderstanding or communicate with the Gen Z's. So for example, uh, one of the ways we can tie back to the With Me video is that to show 
let's say, working at the store a day with me, it would be a great way to engage the young generations, especially the Gen Z, who spend lots of time on social media, to show them a true angle of what exactly it, it is working at the store. So I think this will help. Yeah, I also have some answers. So I think uh, Jen said might be intimidated by the, the, the idea of like working in retail as everyday selling stuff. But actually that's not true. That's not just, that, that's, that's only one, one picture of retail. I think uh, for my experiences, for my time uh, working in the store, I actually went to a lot of events and I thought that was really exciting. So we have how we have how like Hygiene events, uh, exotics, and then our uh, trunks and uh, object nomads. Those are all very exciting experiences. And I think uh, Gen Z had, has no idea that working in retail, you would get a chance to, to experience that. So uh, as I mentioned before, diversifying the experiences, we have to educate Gen Z. We have to let them know that working in retail is more than just selling products. And I think by that, by that idea, they would be, uh, they would be attracted by, by this kind of retail business and they would be willing to, to give it a try. Amazing. Thank you to both of you. Um, that was a tricky question. Uh, the next one um, appeared earlier in the conversation as well. We hear a lot about some generic characteristic about Gen Z and the kind of key signifiers of Gen Z, but um, aren't versatility and diversity the keywords here? Um, so, GN, do you want to answer uh, that one? Um, yeah, for sure. I think we heard really well from uh, Laurie and Joanne as well um, earlier that for the Gen Z, the rise of this idea of self-expression and individualism is really a unique priority for the Gen Z. Um, in At WGSN, we talk about how the Gen Z is quite a um, controversial or contradictory generation where we have two cohorts within the Gen Z consumers, which are kind of defined by WGSN as Gen Me, which is the one that is more kind of self-obsessed, more into self-expression, more style-driven, more follower-focused versus Gen We, which is a generation or a cohort um, that are more change makers, that are more feelings focused and belief driven. So there we do have different tracks of the consumer cohort of the Gen Z. It's not all about um, this whole sameness, but really kind of diving into this versatility and diversity of the Gen Z generation. Um, I'm not sure if Athena might want to add into that as well. Yep, I can also speak a little bit about that. I do think um, definitely Gen Zs, they want to express their creative creativity and they have their own interests, but at the same time, they also really like to form um, connections and relationships with other Gen Z. They like to exchange ideas, you know, they like to spark different, uh, you know, interests and creativity. So definitely, I think uh, we do have like overarching characteristics that might define them, but each of them will express these ideas and interests in very different ways. And it's really up to brands to see, you know, how they want to connect them and how they want to enable uh, the creativity and expressiveness of Gen Z. Yeah. And as, as we mentioned in the report, but also as uh, Laurie and Joanna mentioned earlier, diversity and answering at micro level, the kind of different facets of Gen Z will become key for brands of all sorts, including luxury brands. It won't be only about um, relying on the name anymore, but it will really be about adapting the brand and the brand behaviors to the local market, to the younger generations, to their new claim, their new values, their way of seeing the world uh, through a local lens rather than through a global lens. Our last question here um, will be our big bet or prediction for the future of Gen Z in Asia in relation to luxury. We we'll want to go first on this one. Um, it's a big question. <laughs> I 
I can take this uh, and do the first uh, answer. So um, I think like I mentioned uh, a bit earlier, I think digital is the great connector and definitely Jensen in Asia, they're crossing physical borders and they're really facilitating this endless virtual exchange of ideas that really help them discover their identities, build confidence and really foster, you know, endless creativity and nurture, you know, interesting communities. So this really means luxury brands must look for meaningful and attainable ways to really reach Gen Z and enable this creativity as luxury for them is not just about price or quality, but it's really about value, self-expression and being unique. So brands definitely need to be more creative, more authentic and definitely faster to market with culturally relevant content and products and providing a constant and curated stream of newness while also joining um, the shopping journey online and both offline is also very key to winning with Asia Gen Z consumers. That's it for me. Right. Gia, and do you have a big bet? Um, yeah, I think it's kind of um, aligned to what I mentioned earlier that for um, luxury brands, they need to move beyond capturing consumers by just thinking about products to actually capturing audiences and thinking like, for example, media houses. So as we've seen all through this session, um, product itself is really just becoming one of the many touch points of a brand. Um, in fact, for the Gen Z, it's becoming a trophy that represents belonging to a community or some sort of a unique cultural literacy. And so for the luxury brands of the future that are looking to cultivate brand loyalty in Asia, especially among Gen Z, they need to look beyond um, product desirability alone to do that. So they need to create a universe of stories, of services, of visions, of cultural knowledge and everything else that allows the most loyal Gen Z consumers to form these dedicated fan communities, both in real life and online, and really dig deep into the brand. Um, and that's my big bet for Gen Z and luxury in the future. Amazing. I believe we are running out of time now, so we will close here. Thank you, uh, everyone on this panel, for participating, uh, for all the preparation. Thank you as well to, for, uh, to LVMH for having us today, and thanks for everyone who dialed in uh, today. Just a last reminder, you will find the full report on the online learning library, and have a great day. Such a dynamic session hearing from different perspectives. It is clear that APEC is unique in a sense that it is one of the most fragmented regions in the world. There is an opportunity to localize and become an expression platform for emerging affluent consumers keen to break free from all luxury consumption patterns. As a Gen Z myself, I'm excited to see how luxury can be redefined in this context. Our next session, personalization powered by data and AI, will start shortly. <laughs>